Today I wanted to talk with you about how to use ChemDraw. Uh, ChemDraw is one of the sets of programs that we use when we try to make drawings for either uh, reports or literature or, you know, for when we make our exams for class or whatever it might be, right? There's a set of software that we use to kind of help us sketch out all those drawings. And uh, ChemDraw is probably the most commonly used set of software that we have. Now we are asking you guys to use ChemDraw uh, when you're going through and you're making your formal reports. And um, there is a set of instructions that's on Canvas at the moment to show you guys how you can access that. As a student at the University of Tennessee, uh, you do have access to a certain set of software uh, as student software licenses, and this is one of those sets. It would be useful to get to know how to use this software, not only for the organic chemistry course, but also for uh, any of your chemical biology or biochemistry courses. This suite of software, you can kind of think about it as the Microsoft Office of Chemistry. There's lots of different sets of software that are kind of working behind the scenes and they all have different applications. Um, so it could be useful for you to get to know them, although I can't force you to get to know them necessarily or use them, but uh, we can certainly introduce them to you guys and uh, hope that they will be helpful in your career. So let me show you guys kind of the basics in this video and then in the next video we'll go into some of the little bit more advanced stuff. Once you have it loaded and set up, uh, this should be, let me just close this so how it should load when you guys first come in there. Uh, this should be the basics. Uh, this window in the white here in the middle is where you're uh, going to be drawing. And these are the sets of tools that you guys are going to need. Now, just so you know, these toolbars, you can like click and drag them where you want. And if you just hold them at the side of the screen, right, they'll kind of lock in place. So if you have a problem where your toolbars are floating around, uh, you can, you know, just click and hold and drag them and you can lock them in place. If you're missing a toolbar, you can go up here to the view. I click on the view menu up here and you can see which toolbars. Uh, you can see what I have selected here, the main toolbar, the general toolbar, the style toolbar, and then chemical warnings. That'll show you uh, what's going on if you have a mistake in your drawing. Or not a mistake, at least something unusual. If you start to violate octet rules or things like that. So this is kind of how my setup is, and this is uh, would be my recommendation. What I would do is also do the show periodic table window. So show periodic table window. That's going to bring this up over here. Um, and that's going to be allow you to be able to use every uh, atom to draw your structures. Okay. So let's take a look at what's going on. Up here at the top, this is more just the formatting. Uh, I'll go into that in a little bit. This toolbar here on the left, which, let me just drag this out, right? This is your tools, right? So this is your, uh, I believe this is your general toolbar here, okay? But this is how we actually draw things. Now, most of these are kind of what you're familiar with from other programs. Your top two tools here, how you select uh, either atoms or molecules. This is a rotational tool, a structural perspective, right? You can mouse over it. Fragmentation tools, if you click and hold, right, there's a couple different options that are here. Um, there's the simple uh, simple bond, right, how we select a single bond. This is your eraser. Here's how you can put multiple bonds together if you click and hold. This is how you can manually type things in, right, here's a dashed bond. Here's um, a, a different tools for your pen, how you can connect things together. Uh, reaction arrows are over here. This is your different orbitals and shapes. Uh, here's how you can draw certain uh, uh, geometric shapes here also. Parentheses and brackets. Charges right here, very important. Okay. Um, here's a, a wavy bond, right? If you're having ambiguous stereochemistry, uh, you can uh, use this tool right here. This is very interesting, chromatographic, right? You can make a TLC plate. So they have a template for you to make a TLC plate. So we can just do like that, right? And it starts to build a TLC plate for us that we can modify. Let me just erase that. Uh, there's templates, right? So this little stamp tool right here, if you click and hold and you mouse your way down, there's a bunch of different templates of stuff you can have here, right? So for your uh, biochemistry, right? There's a lot of different uh, uh, artwork and, and things that are preloaded as templates here that you guys can uh, use right here's the very useful duck 
template right there, right? That's very important to have. So if you click on the stamp right here, um, there's a bunch of different uh, preformed structures that you guys have. Your rings are down here, cyclopropane, butane. Here's the ever infamous uh, chair conformations, right? So a perfectly drawn chair conformation. And down here at the bottom, right, you got your preformed benzene ring and a, uh, a, a cyclopentadiene here, okay? So here's where your drawing tools are. And so let's draw basics. We'll just draw some benzoic acid. I'll click here on my benzene ring. Then I'll click anywhere here on this window. Now, if I just click on that, it's just going to drop me a benzene ring there in the middle, and you can work off of that, okay? Let me just erase this. If I go back and if I click and hold, what I can do is I can start to rotate my benzene ring around a pivot point, right? So if I need to draw it in a slightly different angle, you click and hold and you can drag that around, okay? So I'm just going to draw it like that. Up here, I'm going to click on my single bond. As you see, as I mouse over, right, it's going to start to highlight different points. And depending on where you click, it's going to do something different, okay? So I'm going to click right here at one of the bonds. It's going to add a single bond. I click at the end here, it adds another bond. I click at the bond here, it's going to add another bond. So it's going to predictively add bonds in the assumed uh, structure, right? We could continue to make a porcupine here, right? And you can see that a red, whoops, you can see that a red bar starts to show up. That's because there's something unusual going on, right? If we want to get rid of that stuff, just grab your eraser over there, right? and you can get rid of that, right? Now, to make a double bond, what you do is instead of clicking at the end of a line, you click in the middle. It's going to make a double bond. If you click again, it's going to kind of shift that double bond around. If you want to make a triple bond, you click up here, you go to your triple, and then click over in the middle, okay? I want to make benzoic acid. I need some oxygen. I go to my periodic table window. I just click at the end, and it turns my carbon into an oxygen. I click here, and it's going to make an OH, right? Because remember, oxygen is going to have two bonds to it, right? Let's put some lone pairs in just to make it look nice and pretty. We go over here to our chemical symbols. There's our lone pairs. Let me zoom in. So I'm holding down control and using my mouse wheel. You can also go up here as your zoom also. Okay. If I just click on my oxygen, it's going to add a lone pair there and I add a lone pair there. If I click and hold, I can move my lone pairs around to kind of position them where I want. Okay. Now, if you want to put this into Microsoft Word, all you got to do is select it, right, with one of your tools up here and, you know, copy and uh, copy and paste. And then you should be able to put it into a Word document. Okay. So this is the basics of how to draw things. Remember, if you want to add a bond, right, just click at the end of a line and it'll automatically add that into there. You can click and hold and then you can change the angle of that. And if you want to add a different atom, you got to use your periodic table over here and then we can add some things into there. Whoops, I missed. All right, there it is. Okay. So take a look, get, get familiar with the basics, draw some basic stuff, and you should be getting familiar with how to use ChemDraw.